Welcome to the Trailbreaker Podcast. I'm Aaron Feinberg. In this podcast, I explore what it takes to be a trailbreaker through intimate conversations with people carving new paths across the landscapes of business, art, and sport, we dig in on how to excel across seemingly disparate endeavors. What drives people who manage to succeed multidimensionally? Is it how they think? Is it meticulous planning and follow through? Or is it some measure of delusional optimism? My guest today is Taylor Glenn, a people, landscape, and outdoor photographer with a curiosity to explore new places and connect with new people. His work can be found in magazines like National Geographic, Outside, The Wall Street Journal, and Wired, and in campaigns for companies like Subaru and Qantas. He's also a climber, backcountry skier, hunter, and father to Gracie the Alpine Panda. We talked about how apprenticeship is super valuable, that there's no playbook for creative pursuits, and how it's important to trust yourself and know that it's your uniqueness that makes you attractive to clients. Taylor, good to see you, buddy, and thank you very much for welcoming me to your office in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Thank you, Aaron. It is a pleasure to see you and have you here, buddy. It's been a while. Yes, too long, but it is always nice to come back here, and I'm excited to talk to you about kind of all the things that you've been up to that, you know, if anybody is online looking on Instagram at your work, and one of them being right here, this nice bear, you know, they'll see some of the range of the stuff that you get up to from the nature shots to the adventure shots. And, and they also might see you driving around in that beautiful adventure van of yours. And so on some level, you've got this magical dream existence. And I want to get into kind of how all that really has transpired how you've gotten to this point and then what's really under the surface and, and maybe what we don't see. Yeah, absolutely, man. Happy to, happy to share. I'm uh, I'm, I'm transparent. Yeah, I'll, I'm happy to answer any questions. Yeah. Perfect. And so give me a sense, like if you were to categorize yourself and the kind of photography that you're doing, just where, where would you put yourself? You know, this is the, like probably the most common question I get. And it's still the hardest one to answer because there's no like, you know, definitive genre in, in a way, like I, you know, I've been sort of diversified my whole career. And, and I mean, a lot of that's intentional. Part of that is out of necessity, you know, living in a small mountain town, you know, there, there's, you know, there's always the joke, like how many jobs do you have? And everyone will tell you they've got multiple gigs here, but I've got a lot of jobs. They just all happen to be in photography. That's kind of the way that I look at it. And so I've always, um, you know, sort of pursued a lot of different things that are partly based on interest, some based on, you know, the necessity of business. And then, um, you know, but at the end of the day, it's all photography based and, and I, and I love it. I mean, I enjoy all the things that I photograph and that's a bit of a long answer, but essentially, you know, I'm, I'm a people and landscape and sort of outdoor photographer. And, and that encompasses a, a variety of genres. You know, I, I shoot weddings and portraits. I do, um, you know, corporate portraits for, you know, sometimes I do outdoor lifestyle campaigns and travel and tourism. A lot of the, the central theme of all of that, though, is people in the outdoors. So I guess that's really the, you know, the binding uh, thing that connects all of these different things that I photograph. Amazing. And um, in terms of the way that you got to this, you know, you kind of talked a little bit about there's both necessity, but there's also sounds like intention. And, you know, and, you know, purpose of, of choosing to find the way in which you can, you can take all the things you do like and put them underneath one roof. And I guess, is there anything you've done in the photo world that you just aren't doing anymore that you're just done with? You know, I mean, yeah, like early on, you know, I was trying all types of things and, you know, I really started like, I guess you could say my first like real sort of commercial type gig was shooting product photography um, for my dad's business back in the day. And he, you know, he sold, sells these flower products and I would try to set them up for him in a way that, you know, looked nice. And it's essentially catalog or product photography, super boring, but very tedious and technical. And so it's like a good way to learn, you know, that's not the kind of thing I do anymore by any means, but you know, it's informative and it helps, you know, me transition into other things and sort of figure out like, how do you like take the steps to being, you know, a photographer or whatever that means, like, you know, essentially creating something and selling it and, you know, making money from it. So, um, you know, I think 
all of the stuff that I've done, whether I'm still doing it or not, was always a part of, you know, the, the steps to get, you know, to where we are here, you know? Yeah. Let's get into that a little bit. Cause everybody has their unique path. And, and so what was your trajectory into the world of art and photography and also the business of it all? Yeah. Um, well, so I started really just out of an interest in photography itself. So obviously that, that was sort of the, the, the initial factor in like, okay, I like photography. Like, is this something viable? Like I started to explore it and, you know, eventually I realized, well, Hey, maybe this would be a great way to create an awesome lifestyle. Um, you know, super naive trying to think, Oh, I can just go out and take pictures and it'll be all great. Super easy. Right. And, uh, and, you know, just the idea of being able to do cool things and share those experiences was kind of a big motivation to the idea. Now, the reality of that obviously is very different and, you know, really connecting those dots, getting to a point where you get paying clients and trying to figure out how to like run a business around it is, is a whole nother thing. And there's no playbook for that. Um, you know, and I, I don't know, it's just, it, it's been a long grind. I mean, I've been at this 20 plus years now. So, you know, it's really just like that constant, like motivation and determination to kind of, you know, move the needle a little bit. And, you know, I, you start out super small with little jobs or, you know, putting yourself out there and getting things. And, and that just kind of evolves into, you know, bigger and bigger things. And, you know, everyone talks about, oh, you've made it or whatever, but there's no making it. It's just like, you're kind of like always, you know, moving the needle a little bit as you evolve and grow. And, you know, I think that's with any, any job, I'm sure. Yeah. And I, well, I think it is, but it's also, I think particularly relevant because anybody like including myself, right? I can go get this nice iPhone. I can go take a bunch of photos. I can have an, a job or a career doing something that, you know, wasn't even in existence, you know, 10 or 12 years ago and in how that changes potentially someone like yourself, who's at a much different level, um, you know, uh, skill set training. And I kind of curious, did you go through, um, you know, once you had that sort of initial bug that bit you, how'd you grow your skills? Uh, you know, whether it was formal education or whether it was, you know, workshops or mentorships or how, how'd you pull it off? Yeah. I mean, it's really a combination of both, uh, honestly. And they're essentially what I, you know, at the beginning, it was just like self-taught, like, okay, I'm going to go out and figure this out. And, you know, I, I this was like pre Instagram internet was there, but yep. the resources, you know, I kind of came into it when digital became a thing. And, you know, so a lot of that, you know, barrier to entry was definitely easier, but nothing like it is now. Like now it's like everywhere, right? It's ubiquitous. But, um, you know, I had the ability to sort of jump in and figure things out on my own and sort of, you know, navigate a lot of this stuff that would have been really hard to do even, you know, a little few years prior to when I was getting started. Um, and so, you know, the, the first initial process was like that self grind of figuring things out and, you know, just like going through the process and trial and error. Um, when I moved to Wyoming, I, you know, one of the first things I did was look up photographers and reach out, you know, to people and try to find like some people that were doing things that I thought were interesting. And, you know, I, so I started assisting a little bit and that was huge. I mean, learning from people who know how to do something, you'll learn more assisting or, uh, you know, interning or whatever you're doing in the first six months, then you will learn in four to 10 years of school or whatever. So it's invaluable, right? Like that, that apprenticeship type process, um, you know, and, and through the years of doing that, there, there came a point where I realized like, okay, I really do want to make a serious go at this and I, and I need to invest in that. And so for me, the decision was to go seek out a program which was the Academy of Art in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. And that was very formative. I, you know, interestingly, I don't think that the program itself, well, I joke, like, I feel like I got more out of just being in San Francisco and being exposed to so many things than I did maybe out of the, the formality of school. But yes, that, that structure, the, the programming was hugely helpful. Let me ask you a question about that, because I've heard and I don't know if it was a conversation you and I'd had, or maybe some other friends who'd gone through the Academy of Art program. But one of the things I've consistently heard is that it's, you know, you learn some great stuff, but what they really do a fantastic job of over there is, is helping you figure out the business of, of art and, and getting you moving into an actual career. <laughs> Actually, it's, well, it's funny you say that. That must have been a conversation about something else because 
I will tell you right now, like art school is not a place to get business education. And that to me is actually one of the more important aspects of being a freelancer. And it's, you know, look, at the end of the day, I'm a business person first in a lot of ways, because like in order to do this, you've got to, you got to learn how to run a business. I mean, that's what we're, that's what, that's what we're doing. And, or, you know, both of us essentially, and, and those aren't lessons that get taught in art classes. And, and so that's one of the things that I feel is a sort of a, a disadvantage to art school. And I, you know, I try to caution people when they ask me like, what should I do? You know, go into all of this with your eyes wide open and realize like, you know, there's a lot of things here that you need to figure out and, you know, art school might satisfy one part of it. Um, but you know, business is so important finance. I mean, these things that like, you know, we hear about and, you know, I don't know so many different places, especially today we celebrate entrepreneurship, but you know, it's hard to really learn that stuff or, or figure it out, especially in a program that's based on photography and art, et cetera. So, um, you know, I always advise you know, people to like seek out, you know, business and, you know, those types of education too, because, I mean, look, at the end of the day, you got to, you got to know how to, you know, balance the checkbook and, you know, make good decisions about money because, uh, you know, that's, what's important. You know, that's, what's ultimately going to keep you in this in, in a more long-term capacity. Makes a lot of sense. And then, you know, going back to when you were apprenticing and, and assisting, you know, what did you do to keep the lights on? Uh, and, and actually, first of all, were those gigs paid? And if they were, uh, you know, did it give you enough in the bank monthly, or did you have to go and do other stuff? Yeah. I mean, definitely had a bunch of hustles, you know, like, you know, I primarily, most of mine primarily took place here in, in Jackson hole. And, you know, so I was doing some of those, like, you know, hustle jobs as you do when you're young. And, you know, i worked at the resort a little bit. I did odd jobs here and there, and then I picked up some paid assisting work. So yes, it was paid. It didn't pay much but man, it was on the job training and I was learning a ton and it helped. It was hugely helpful. So like, you know, it was a combination of, you know, hustling different things to make it all happen. Um, and so, yeah, like luckily I had a few paid gigs and, and then I had some other stuff to, you know, to support the, the habit. And you had mentioned, you know, it's, it almost never feels like you've made it. It, it may be in other people's eyes. It appears, yeah. you know, just from the, their perspective or what we put out into the world to, to advertise ourselves, et cetera. But if you were to sort of talk about the different tiers, like, you know, obviously you were assisting and that's, you know, lots on the job training and you grew some skills. And then, then what happened? Where did, what was the next leap? And then the leap after that? Yeah, man. I mean, it's like, they're all blurred together. There's no like definitive step, right? Like, I think it's just like each, each, you, you know, you're always progressing, I, I guess. And, and you should be right. So like, hopefully, and I, I, I think that like, I mean, if you, it's easier to compare then and now, but when you look at those, you know, the nuances between those like progressions of getting to, from there to here is it, it's hard to, hard to really like define that. But, you know, as you get older, you get more responsibility, you get a mortgage, you get whatever, like all these things that become part of, you know, being an adult and trying to run a business. And so like the whole idea of like feeling like you've made it, I mean, I guess it depends on how you define it. Right. Like for me, I do in a lot of ways feel like I've made it because I'm, I've got, you know, a lot of fun assignments. I've got a lot of great clients and, you know, I'm living in this great place. And so you know, all of that stuff certainly by appearances defines success or whatever, but it's hard, you know, like the, all that responsibility adds a lot more pressure. You got to charge a lot more money for your product and your service. And so, you know, I think these are good problems to have, but it's also part of that, like, be careful what you wish for type of thing. Like, I mean, I look at some of the young people coming up and, um, you know, I'm just like, man, I wish I'd, had less to deal with and I could just go make pictures and it could be fun and like not even worry about, you know, making sure I'm covering my, you know, rent and I'm dealing with, you know, clients and all the negotiations of you know business and so on. And I don't know. So like, I think there's these different levels that happen sort of organically and, you know, I, I I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I'm grateful for where I'm at. And I'm just trying to like, you know, keep that progression going always, you know? Yeah. Well, I think you're hitting on some important things, right? With the, it's always, it's always a little different when you pull back the curtain and, and, you know, what starts off as, as a passion 
you know, when you start making that your, your job, sometimes it's not so fun anymore. And, and it's important to be clear. And I also think the value of, of going in assisting and trying some things out, you know, before you fully commit and not to say that you don't jump in and, and, and commit, but you get a sense of what it really is going to feel like and decide like, should this just be my hobby? You know, is this something else that would actually make my day-to-day work life just much more enjoyable instead of this hobby that all of a sudden is a job and now it doesn't feel so good? Yeah. I mean, this, this conversation could go so many directions and, and, and there's so much I, in a lot of ways I, I want to say about it, but you know, I think what's sort of resonating right now in my thinking is that, you know, there um, it's, Oh man, I, I'm, I'm losing. I'm, I was losing my train of thought. It's like spinning around. There's so many things. Uh, Take it where you want to. doesn't yeah, matter. Um, so um, wait, you got to ask me the question. I'm, yeah. t- I'm totally. Yeah. Losing. We were talking a little bit about, you know, just how you can wind up on a path where what your passion was now is your job. And then it's not so sweet. And, and, and I think it's important to kind of explore with that a little bit. Got it. Sorry. Now I, I remember what I wanted to say. Yeah, it's Sorry. perfect. It's good. So I think that one of the things that, you know, if I could give advice to somebody, right? Like if I was going to say, okay, here's something really to think about, like, you know, know, like know your strengths and your weaknesses, because, you know, when you're doing a job that is, based on a, something that you create, whether you're doing design or, you know, you're teaching people things like you do in coaching, like you are a great example of like playing on something that you're good at, which is connecting with people and like helping people like connect with others. And like, you know, recognizing that, like, I guess in myself, I'm, I recognize certain things that work well. And those are, you know, those are traits that I try to leverage to help me do a better job or get better clients or whatever. Um, I think also understanding what you're not good at is important. Um, You know, a lot of people try different things and, you know, you got to try a lot of things to figure out what you really like, because, you know, there's a lot, a lot of value in figuring out really quickly what you don't like versus trying to like pursue something that, you know, maybe it's pay, maybe it pays well, but like, if you don't like it, you're going to burn out quick. Right. So I think it's like really good to explore a lot and, and really like you know, pay attention and do a lot of soul searching and, and pursue the things that feel right to you. Yeah. And it's one of the impetuses for this podcast is, is like to understand what really goes on for people, you know, and some of these people are friends, some of these people are my clients, uh, some of these people were clients and other friends or, you know, any, any way that someone's come into my world. But I just think that, you know, I've gotten to hear such great stories that often I can't share because it's confidential, but this kind of information is so magic because it's the kind of stuff that someone could tell you in ideally 30 seconds, but if we don't hear it, right, we wind up going down these paths and and we get into these holes that we didn't need to get into. And, um, you know, if someone listens to this, this conversation, they go, Oh, I didn't consider that as a photographer uh, or a, a career in photography. That's something I should probably pay attention to. And maybe that doesn't change anything and they dive completely in. Or maybe somebody who's like, mm, I, actually, I don't necessarily think I have that much creative talent, but I'm real good at this other stuff. I'm going to go give it a shot. Like, I think that's great. And that's kind of important for, you know, for people to hear from folks who are doing it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I, um, I think that like, you know, there's, I, we sort of joked about this earlier that, that I kind of had that idea that there's like two kinds of people. There's the, there's the people who are going to just go and figure it out. And then there's everyone else who's going to kind of sit on the sideline and be a little bit paralyzed by the fear or like risk of, or that, you know, the idea of taking that risk or whatever it might be, you know, there's no playbook for anything, at least in a, a creative pursuit. I think you like, you just got to get out there and try a lot of things and, you know, it's trial and error and you gotta, you gotta have a strong, you know, uh, you know, like ability to, to hear no a lot. Um, and you know, so it's just resilience and determination is really what it comes down to in a lot of ways. Yeah. And, and that's a good, perfect segue because I want to, I want to move into some of the, the hobbies slash, you know, uh, avenues that, that your hobbies, but then you can go in and make some pictures. Like, you know, you guy from North Carolina and I know you're a pretty, pretty good climber, but you're also, you know, skiing is something that's, you know, I would you know, maybe not new to you, but you've been skiing for how long would you say? Well, I started skiing when I moved to Wyoming. I'm from North Carolina. I grew up on the, near the coast. So like that was totally foreign to me. And 
I moved to Jackson, mostly motivated by climbing and, um, you know, summer sports, but of course living here, I mean, this, you gotta, you gotta ski. And I mean, that was something I wanted to explore too. So, you know, ever since I've been in Jackson, really the last 18 years was kind of when that started. And I'm, I'm not by no means a good skier. I, you know, I can keep up with some of the people that I, you know, tour and do all that stuff with, but you know, that's a lifelong pursuit. And like so many things, I wish I had started when I was a kid. Um, but you know, I can get around in the back country and, and get to some pretty cool places. So, and that's where I was going with this is like, you know, I've seen some shots of you, you know, towing a sled with a buddy and you're going to some crazy adventure in the middle of Yellowstone in the middle of winter, you know, winter camping. And, you know, you posted to a couple of stories about what it was like, et cetera. And so it's like literal trail breaking, you know, you know, plow, plowing through the snow, but then it's like, you know, it's not something you grew up doing necessarily. And, you know, it isn't like you're just hanging out on the bunny slope. You're actually sending it into the, into places that not, <laughs> not even a lot of these very accomplished folks do. So what was, what, what goes on for you that makes that actually interesting? Yeah. I mean, I think it, it's mostly just the, the curiosity to explore, right? Like that's actually not something that's new. Like that's, I mean, I grew up playing in the woods as a kid. It was just in North Carolina, it was a different landscape, but like, I've always had this like fascination with the outdoors and the world. And, you know, I was lucky to be, a, be able to, as a kid, explore the, the world around me. And so that, you know, I'm just a big kid now, you know, like I'm still exploring and, and that, you know, the motivation to get out and see these incredible landscapes and places is, is really what drives it, whether it's for work or play or whatever. And, and when you choose partners and I know a couple of your partners, but some, I don't, and you know, what, what are you choosing? You know, what are the, what are the characteristics in a person that you want to tow around uh, on these adventures with? Okay, good. So we're talking about like adventure partners, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, so, you know, I think it's just mostly like, you know, knowing that they're, first of all, it's just being, you know, people that you can trust, like, you know, we're going as some of these things are situations where, I mean, it could be serious, like, like even life or death. Right. So like you need to trust your partner and, and whether it's climbing, going into the mountains in the winter, whatever, you know, you're taking on to some, you're taking on risk. And so you want to be comfortable with these people and, you know, you don't just like choose somebody out of the, you know, out of the gate that, you know, you don't, you haven't had some sort of like, you know, I guess relationship with, um, but, you know, also people that like, that just are going to explore and appreciate the moment and, and be a, be present and like really enjoy it. And, you know, I guess, you know, it's like, we, I guess in a way it's the way we'd all choose some, somebody that we want to spend time with on a really interesting thing. It's like, you know, can we vibe? Can we, you know, are we homies? Can we hang and have fun? And like, those are, those are big parts of that. Wonderful. And, and then, kind of connected to that. Cause you obviously there's these great pictures that come out of some of these adventures. And when you're with somebody in the objective, maybe is that right, we're going to go 10 miles back and we're going to camp out in this spot, but then you've got to snap some good photos and maybe the purpose is the adventure and the photos come secondary, or maybe there's a bit of an even like, does it change, you know, your, your mindset? Like, do you have, do you have to switch from adventure mindset to now I work, I got to, you know, or is it, it is it more seamless than that? Yeah, no, that's a great question. And it 100% plays a role in the, um, in the sort of atmosphere of the trip or whatever's happening, right? Like, you know, as a photographer, it's almost like a curse in a way, like it's hard to turn off, you know, like there's, I mean, I'm not the like quintessential guy that always has the Leica around my neck and is always photographing. Like I've never been that guy, but there's been plenty of times where I'm like, shit, I should be that guy. Where's my camera. Um, but you know, you're always sort of seeing things, right? Like that's, you kind of start to see the world in that way through a lens. And so you're sort of always constantly thinking about, Oh, there's a picture. That's a good picture. And that definitely plays a role and can affect a situation uh, positively or negatively. And I think it's always important to, you know, like anything, like if you're going to bring something to a situation, you need to like, make that known and let people say, Hey, or, or just make people aware that, Hey, here's, there's an expectation that I'm going to take pictures and I want you to participate in that, you know, because a lot of times we say, you know, we, you know, there's the, the way that we talk about photography is that we're going to take pictures. And so you're, you're just by saying that you're talking about taking something, right? Yep. So in a way you are kind of taking something from that situation. And so you want to make sure that you're also reciprocating that. Right. So I think it's important that, you know, it plays a role in it. And if you're in an adventure situation, like whether it's climbing or, 
whatever it is skiing. I mean, these can be dangerous things. And if you're starting to stopping to take pictures, you're interrupting the flow and taking your mind off of what's actually happening in your own safety or your partner's safety. Um, so, you know, these are things to be really mindful of for, for any, anybody who's out, you know, playing or having fun, you know, like, you know, you want it to contribute in a positive way, I guess. Yeah. That, that safety side for sure. And then even sometimes it's the, the, the vibe of the day, right. We're just, we're out here, we're having fun. And I can say, you know, as a longtime skier, I'll see some of your photos up on the past with say Tim and, and I'm thinking, man, those are beautiful. And that snow looks fantastic. And I always think how the hell did they have the patience just to stop skiing for a minute and get a photo. And I, cause I, I get so excited about doing the thing that, you know, I'm a photographer, but I've, you know, I've been in, you know, on the, on the model side of it for, you know, a handful of times. And I'm just like, I just wouldn't want to stop. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, you, you interview, you know, a lot of athletes and, and I'm sure other photographers, I mean, ask anybody when they're out shooting and, you know, they get all those amazing epic footage, there's a split second of that epicness. And the rest of it is spent like waiting and waiting for the right moment, the light, all these things. So like, it's a job. I mean, people think it looks amazing and it's super glamorous and in parts of it are, but at the end of the day, like if you're out there trying to make pictures, and I say make, not take. I like the idea of, you know, making because it's a process. Um, but, you know, you're, you're, you're working and, you know, trying to control as much as you can in order to make those pictures the way you want them to be. So it takes a lot of commitment and participation from everybody. And, you know, outside of that, um, what we've been talking about in terms of adventure and the process of, you know, your career, you've then done some things related to the photo world, but, but I, remember you did a talk, I think it was in Vegas. Was that right? When you, when it was for which company I forget, put you on stage to talk about your, some of your pictures, right? Yeah. I had an opportunity to, to speak for Nikon, um, the camera company, uh, at CES, which is the big consumer electronic show. Um, and yeah, really neat opportunity just to get up and share work. You know, they're, they've, I've worked with them over the years on a few projects and they've been really supportive and, um, they're just a great client too, because they really support photographers and the work that they're doing. And they let you kind of share what you do in a way that's really organic and, and nice. And, uh, and it was great. Cause I had you coach me a little <laughs> bit on, on that presentation. It was huge. I would have totally failed without that. So it was, uh, it was an awesome process to go through. And, and, you know, what did you think of it? I was that the first time you'd ever gone on stage in that form. Yeah. For in that way, for sure. Um, it was definitely a new thing for me. So, you know, it was a great experience and I love getting in, you know, in new situations and challenging situations. And like, it was, it was, it was great. You know, it really pushed me and I learned a ton and you were a big part of that. And I really appreciated that. Well, my bringing it up wasn't a, wasn't to get you to plug me, but thank you. Yeah. It was, it was more to highlight the fact that, you know, it's another example of how you just keep moving your career in, in all these different places. And, yeah. you know, from assistant to all of a sudden being on stage at a, at a massive conference, you know, highlighting some of your work, but I also remember uh, watching that talk and, and there were some really great teachable moments that you were sharing on like, what were your settings and what was your, perspective on, on this particular picture and how you got to, to create the image that everyone was watching. And I was just, you know, uh, anytime you get to a point in which you become a subject matter expert and people will look to you to, to teach, I think being able to one, be willing to give that information up and then to do it in a clear and powerful way is inspiring to people. Right. And, and, uh, really understand like, Oh, you know, that's the setting he used or, and did not, not to be secretive with the, with the info. Yeah. No, I, I mean, it's great that they give that platform to, to photographers to speak and share what they do. And I mean, look, there's no, there's no magic sauce or rocket science here. This is all like really straightforward stuff. I mean, there's so, you know, the beauty of the climate we're in now is that, you know, we're surrounded by the ability to learn anything that we want at any time, you know, a, a few keystrokes away and you can have classes for days yeah. on, whatever subject you want. And photography is the same. And it, you know, it's a wonderful opportunity for anybody to get into the game and learn. And I mean, look, I, no matter what, like, you know, there's always this funny thing about creatives that they're always a little guarded in some ways and scared, a little bit scared to share. And, and I get it. I mean, I'm, I, I can be that way in some regards too. Um, but at the end of the day, like the way that I see the world is very different than the way that you see the world or anybody else. Right. So no matter what we do, even if I tell you exactly what I did, you're not going to be able to make the same picture in the same way. It's just not going to happen because there's too many variables that, that are part of that equation. 
And, but the most important one is you and the way that you see. And so like, look, I'm an open book in that regards. I love to share. And I think it's a great thing that Nikon allows that. And, you know, anytime I get a chance to, you know, share with people and I mean, it's great. It's fun. You know, I love to talk shop. And and I think the last thing I want to ask you is, is how have you shifted, you know, in terms of the way that you approach this work, you know, you obviously, I, well, obviously I would imagine you're not the same photographer you were when you first started in, in the way that you, you know, you choose to show up or the, the things you have to put yourself back on track with, or where, like, where do you drift and, and where do you have to kind of pull the reins back or, or where are you more grounded and more wise? Man. Wow. That's a, that's a good question or a tough question. I mean, I think that like, you know, there's, so part of it, like, you know, you gain, you, you, you sort of create a way of, or a style. Everyone likes to say, what's your style? Or you can see that like, that looks like a, a Taylor Glenn picture or a whatever picture. Right. So like, you know, over the years, you sort of create a way of shooting in a look and a style that becomes yours, which is really important, right? Like you, you have a sort of look that people gravitate to. And, you know, I put my work out in front of somebody and somebody else puts their work up. I mean, you know, you're, it's, you're going to see a difference, even if it's the same subject, right? Because you have a certain way of shooting. And so I think that that is a, you know, an important thing because you're going to, no matter what situation you go into, you're going to kind of lean on what you know and how you shoot and how you operate. Um, And so in a way, I guess that's become a little bit more streamlined and sort of intuitive and, you know, you can sort of get out of the way of yourself by, you know, trusting your instincts and and looking for pictures or looking for, you know, solving problems, whatever it might be for a client and, you know, being more present in the shoot because you're, you know, you've got this experience, you've got the confidence to go into a situation, even if it's totally uncomfortable because you're shooting something you're not comfortable with, you, you've got these tools in your kit, both from the creative side and the, and the sort of operational side, whatever, that allow you to, you know, provide a better service in a way. Right. I, I mean, I hope I'm answering the question the right way here. Completely. Cause yeah. that's what I was sort of wondering about is, is how important it is to trust yourself and to know that you, that you have arrived at whatever level, you know, that you're working and that you can, that your uniqueness. And I think it's important for every industry, but for sure as a yeah. creative, right. Your uniqueness is one of the things that makes you attractive to whoever your client is and to trust that and, and to keep investigating what is that secret sauce. And, 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 you know, what I was alluding to originally with the question was, was like, has that secret sauce changed, you know, or have you just gotten more clear over the years? Yeah. Um, I don't know if there's a good answer for that. I think it's just matured a little bit. I don't know. You know, I, I would say like, if anything, I'm, I'm certainly a lot more confident in, in where I am now in terms of like, you know, if a client comes to me, whatever the, whatever the product need or whatever the, you know, end result is, I certainly feel a lot more confident about delivering that product or you know, knowing what needs to be done in order to get those problems solved for the client. Right. So like, I think that's what sort of separates me now from me earlier or where, you know, maybe someone who's a little younger than me who's starting out doesn't quite know all these things. Like there's no substitution for time, right? Like we, we live in this climate and and it's amazing to see the level of sophistication in image making that's out there. And Instagram is a big part of that, right? Like it's changed the landscape, not only for the, the creator, but the consumer, like we're all visually more sophisticated as a result of Instagram specifically, because that's how we interact with imagery. Right. And so in a way that level is just much higher and people can get to those like, you know, levels of creating interesting images a lot quicker because all that information's out there. It's not hard to find, but nothing substitutes for the time it takes to, to learn the craft, to learn your style, to learn how to interact with people, you know, all these things, like there's plenty of people that can make amazing pictures, but there's a lot less people that can take care of clients that can deliver on time, do the things that needed, you know, need to be done to, to run a business. Right. So like you can't really fake all that. And so it's um, you know, it's just a matter of putting in the work and being patient and, and, you know, working hard, you know? 
Perfect. So look, I want to thank you for your time today. And this was a super great chat. And, and when folks want to find you, what's the best way that they can get a hold of you? Um, well, you know, at Taylor Glenn is my Instagram handle. It's a good place, but, uh, Taylor photo.com is my website. Um, you know, those are probably the easiest ones. Um, you know, just look me up through there and you know, you'll find, you'll find I'm, there's no secret. I'm out there, you know, that's, we, we promote ourselves. So it's all, it's easy to find. And is it Glenn with one N or two? Two N's. Thanks. Yeah. G L E N N. Yep. Right on. Well, look, all the best for the rest of the summer and looking forward to some new pictures that you make on adventures and uh, really appreciate your time. Awesome, Aaron. Great to talk with you, buddy. Thank you. Sure thing. The Trailbreaker podcast is created by Aaron Feinberg with production support provided by Michael Morey. More interviews and videos can be found at AaronFeinberg.com.